Hi everybody, my name is Scott Card and welcome to my lab. If you're new to my channel and you like the material, please do like and subscribe if you'd like to be made aware when I produce more videos. If you're a returning viewer, thank you very much. I really appreciate your, your patronage and as always, welcome. Today I have a video for you that comes from a viewer who asked, why not just add a couple diodes to an LM317 so that we could go down to zero volts? And that's a great question and it trips up quite a few new students that I have. And so I thought I'd take a minute, go through uh, the design and why you can't do that, and then show you quickly how you could uh, modify an LM317 so that it is adjustable down to zero volts. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to pick some components. Okay, so let's start off with our LM317. Notice voltage in, voltage out, and, and adjust. Okay. Uh, so the next thing is that we're going to need a pair of resistors to create our voltage divider. Okay. Uh, let's uh, use a potentiometer here. Okay. So there's our basic circuit. And as we can see, uh, we can go down to 1.25, but we can't go any lower. So what would happen... Uh, as my as my viewer suggested, uh, if we were to uh, drop in a couple more diodes, okay. So let's uh, let's pop them in. They should be, you know, I'll call it uh, 0 0.6 to 0.7 of a volt per diode, and so this should uh, this should be able to go down to zero. Oh, it, it can't. Okay. Well, let's let's check out uh, what our voltage actually is over here. Voltage and yeah, so we still have 1.25, but we don't have we don't have that full voltage going across here. Uh, when we crank it up, however, to the other side, uh, now we can see that we do have we do have that 1.2 uh, a little bit more uh, drop across here, and that's because if we take a look at at a diode, one of the things that you'll see is uh, that. The voltage, uh, the forward voltage, will actually change uh, with the current. And so once we we start to get down to the smaller currents, we're not able to see that same voltage drop, but we do see a larger voltage drop uh, at higher current. And so this is this is why we can't necessarily use uh, a typical diode to provide that voltage drop. Uh, so what to do? So in some data sheets, they actually talk about uh, the this being not necessarily ground, but but a, a voltage reference. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this guy over here real quick, and we're going to get rid of this, and I'm going to give this a a voltage reference, a DC voltage reference here, and let's uh, let's let's call it a negative 1.25 volts. And you'll see what ha what happens here is that we're now able, we'll be able to adjust our voltage at now down to uh, zero volts. So, okay, here we go. And, okay, uh, I mean, three three millivolts, four millivolts, it, it's uh, it's pretty close. I mean, we could we could tweak it a little bit further. And so, so this is all fine and dandy, you say, but how in the heck do I get uh, a, a negative voltage? voltage reference uh, for for my circuit and that that's a fantastic question and uh, again this is something that uh, that we do learn in electronics is how to how to actually uh, pump down our, our voltage so uh, here I'll just I'll slide the circuit in here real quick okay so let's uh Let's run it, and you'll notice that we are at a negative 1.348. Uh, we'll call it 1.35, uh, and so that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, so let me explain what's what's actually going on here. Uh, we have uh, our AC signal coming in, and we're isolating it. Okay, and we're 
pumping it down. So we're only looking at the negative portion. Obviously the positive is going through this diode and charging up this 100 microfarad capacitor. And uh, this will work with full bridge rectification as well. Don't, don't, don't think that it has to be a half bridge. But the idea is that uh, we are pumping it down. We're rectifying it because again, it's negative. So we're looking at uh, the, the negative portion uh, we have a nice stiffening capacitor in here. And if we, if we check this voltage, it will be actually quite, quite low here. Uh, so here we go. We'll, we'll run this. And so we can see that we're actually at negative 17.9 volts. So quite low. And the reason why we want this capacitor in here is because we want a nice stable voltage. We don't want to have to bleed off uh, an excess amount. Uh, we then have a current limiting resistor and these two diodes, they create our, our voltage reference. And so if, if we wanted something a little bit higher, we could use a Zener diode in here or a voltage reference. Uh, but for our, our situation, uh, two diodes is going to be close enough. And then of course, we've got a small capacitor, uh, to, to hold, to hold that current. Uh, in ca case we do have any real fluctuations. And so now when we test the actual circuit out, we can see we get down to uh, 0.1. It's not too bad, it's not great, but, and we can go all the way up to 12. So uh, if, if we wanted, we could, to, to, uh, we could add a third diode in here. That's not a problem. Let's go in and add a third diode. And it's obviously, well, maybe not obviously, uh, you're going to see that it's too much. Okay. There we go. And now when we run it, uh, we go down to a negative 0.7, which is too, too far. I found, I found in practice the, instead of the one, uh, one and four double oh seven, the one and 4148, uh, tends to work a little bit better for this and their lower cost. Uh, the couple things to remember is that we do actually need a fair amount of current uh, to go through this. So this capacitor here, the, this, this decoupling capacitor needs to be fairly large. If, if you limit it, uh, you will have trouble uh, getting enough current through that. Number one, number two, uh, because we're introducing a negative voltage, it does take time to charge up, right? As it's going through this capacitor, which uh, if you work out uh, the reactive capacitance, uh, it, it, does, it does actually take some time to charge up this capacitor and then this capacitor as it goes through. So, uh, and we're suppressing, we're suppressing that output voltage. So you're gonna find when you first turn it on, uh, it's, go it's going to spike up about 1.2 volts or so. And, and that can be a problem. Um, also, when you turn it off, uh, that it's, it's, it's not, it's going to follow that same, that same, uh, that same issue where it discharges this, this, uh, these capacitors, the voltage rises, uh, sl slightly for a moment and then it, and then it falls. And, and as long as you're aware of that and you don't have anything too sensitive, it's not a problem. Okay. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Do like and subscribe if you'd like to be made aware when I make new videos. Uh, and always, thank you for your time and patience and have yourself a great day. All right. Bye now.